Welcome to the studio of the WSIS Plus 20 Forum High Level Event here in Geneva. Our guest today is His Excellency Mr. Gobin Singh Deo, and you are the Malaysian Minister of Digital. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time to come in and speak to us. Thank you for having me. Let me ask you, as Malaysia's Minister of Digital, tasked with overseeing the nation's digital ecosystem, how do you approach the challenge of crafting effective policies and regulations in a constantly shifting technological landscape? In December last year, the Prime Minister made a decision to establish a Ministry of Digital. And I think uh, that underscores the country's commitment uh, to make sure that uh, we have proactive uh, digital regulatory framework uh, in existence to look at how it is uh, we can deal with challenges moving ahead. I think all of us accept that uh, we now live in a rapidly evolving technological world in which uh, we see new creations coming about and we need to be uh, prepared uh, uh, for these, uh, this technology. Uh, in a world uh, where we allow technology to change the way we live, we work, we play, I think the government plays an important role uh, to ensure that uh, whatever uh, it has to see in terms of uh, um, products uh, are properly regulated uh, and of course are safe uh, for use uh, among the citizens. Now in this regard, I think the Ministry has looked at uh, three broad areas which we find to be uh, the pillars uh, that would support uh, a digital ecosystem uh, which is safe and secure. Firstly, we look at uh, infrastructure. Now in terms of infrastructure, I think uh, we all know that uh, as things change, you must have a, a system that is robust, a system that is prepared uh, not just for technology of today, but technology that uh, we anticipate uh, in the future. Now, in this regard, uh, Malaysia has, of course, positioned itself as a country that uh, has perhaps uh, one of the best 5G networks uh, in the world. And I think what is important is for us to ensure uh, that uh, there is uh, adoption uh, among our people uh, of the infrastructure that we have. And in this regard, I think uh, of late, uh, we are able to say that we have at least 80% uh, COPA, the REACH, uh, which is something that is quite uh, substantial, 11.9 uh, million uh, subscribers, uh, and of course, a 35.4% uh, adoption rate. And this just in three years. So I think it demonstrates how it is Malaysia is very focused on the need for us to roll out infrastructure and to ensure that everyone has access to that infrastructure because ultimately uh, it empowers uh, each and every citizen. And I think uh, the policy that we uh, have is that no one uh, should be left behind, uh, no matter where they are uh, in and throughout the country. Now, in this regard, uh, we also look at how uh, AI has changed uh, uh, <clears throat> how it is we approach uh, infrastructure. Uh, we know that uh, when it comes to uh, AI, uh, there will be certain requirements uh, that the global players in AI will look at when they decide uh, to invest in a particular country. Uh, for example, uh, they'll look at land. Uh, you want to create data centers. Uh, land is important. Uh, of course, uh, water and electricity. So in this uh, aspect, the government has uh, put together a policy where they look at how it is we can ensure uh, that we have uh, the necessary capacity to support uh, investments of that nature. And I think that is something that uh, uh, is recognized globally. Uh, of late, uh, you see investments coming in from global players such as Microsoft, uh, Google, even AWS, and investments in the tune of 16.1, 16.2 billion US dollars. And of course, uh, that also creates lots of jobs. And of course, it puts us uh, on the global map. So when you look at infrastructure, uh, we need to understand that uh, first, the policy must be to ensure that there is reach uh, uh, to all our citizens and of course uh, beyond. Uh, and subsequently, we also create an ecosystem uh, which will attract uh, foreign investment. And I think we've succeeded in uh, doing just that uh, in, in the last six uh, months or so. Now, having said that, uh, when you have infrastructure, it is important for you to also assure uh, people using it that that infrastructure is secure. So in this regard, that's the second pillar that uh, we focus on, uh, security. Now, we have taken it upon ourselves to ensure that we have legislation in place uh, that protects uh, our critical network information uh, infrastructure. And we passed a bill in Parliament uh, in March <clears throat> known as the Cyber Security Act. Uh, that act basically uh, imposes requirements uh, on these uh, 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 critical network infrastructures uh, to ensure that uh, they are safe in the sense that they are 
safe uh, in a cybersecurity um, uh, world of today. Uh, there are requirements that we put up by way of regulation. They are expected to comply. If there's no compliance, and of course that could result uh, in severe uh, repercussions for them. Uh, and we are still in the process of drafting those regulations and we expect to have uh, those regulations in place uh, by July, uh, in which, uh, by which time we also expect uh, to have that act uh, gazetted and of course enforced. Now, in addition to this, uh, we've also looked at uh, how it is we could ensure that there is security when it comes to data. So we have uh, provisions of law that deal with data and data protection. And I think uh, uh, we are also moving uh, ahead to, to, to reinforce some of those provisions. In May, uh, there's uh, amendments that are going to be made uh, in which we will now uh, suggest that companies in the private sector also ensure uh, that they have enough capacity in uh, their uh, uh, offices to ensure that uh, they are secure uh, from cyber attacks and cyber threats. Of course, we, also, we have set up, we have a commissioner uh, who deals with uh, data protection problems uh, and of course I think that there's a need for us to expand it more. Moving ahead in future, I think the whole question of data and how it is we deal with data and making sure uh, that data is protected will become uh, an essential aspect that people will look at uh, when it comes to working in any environment uh, that requires them uh, to go online and of course to participate in, in, in uh, whatever work it is that they have to do. So we are looking at those angles and having said uh, that, we also recognise the fact that uh, there should be mechanisms by which uh, uh, people uh, can share data and use uh, data that's available. And I think that's key because moving ahead, all of us know that, that the power of uh, technology today uh, lies heavily in data and how it is uh, you use it. So in this regard, um, we, have, uh, we are in, currently in process of uh, drafting uh, a data sharing bill, which we hope uh, to table in Parliament in the last quarter of this year. Uh, I've looked at it, I think it's uh, very, very comprehensive, uh, and I've pushed my ministry to uh, ensure that we are actually able to get it done uh, by the end of this year. Now, having touched on infrastructure and also explained why it is uh, security is important, uh, we come to the third pillar. Now, when we have infrastructure which is secure, we must make sure that uh, people are sufficiently skilled to use that infrastructure, uh, uh, which is secure. So this is the third aspect and the third pillar, which forms uh, uh, a substantial part of what this my ministry focuses on. So how, how do we actually look at uh, ensuring that uh, that talent um, is 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 uh, considered or a talent? Or how do we focus on talent? Uh, and in, in this regard, we also have to look at the realities of today. If we look at talent in the form of education and we say that look, people need to have degrees uh, uh, and that uh, is the talent we're looking for, then that is something that uh, will take a lot of time. And I think moving ahead and with technology of today, uh, we don't have the luxury of time. So the question is how can a government actually formulate uh, uh, modules uh, which allow people to skill themselves or reskill themselves quickly? So you're looking at uh, short modules which are put into place and we need to encourage uh, uh, people to uh, uh, participate in those modules and when they do that and they have actually uh, completed uh, uh, those modules, then uh, you give them accreditation. So in other words, you say to people that uh, if you actually uh, participate in these programs, uh, you will actually uh, get perhaps a digital badge uh, which shows that you are someone who is uh, now uh, equipped to deal with uh, those areas of technology that uh, are concerned. And I think when you do that, uh, people will be able to uh, be a bit more um, agile and they will be able to uh, take advantage of, uh, of new technologies as we develop quickly. And I think that's what's important. Uh, we must also remember that uh, when we talk about talent, we're not just talking about those who are going to school and uh, in, in university now. We also have a huge population uh, who have already uh, got jobs, uh, who already are trained uh, in certain uh, fields uh, and they are uh, experts in those areas. They too need to understand how this technology will impact upon them. They too will have to look at how this uh, AI, for example, will change how this they work. Uh, and I think the government plays an important role to ensure that they also understand uh, what new technology is and they know how to use it. And this is why I think the focus uh, on these three pillars uh, become uh, uh, very, very important. And um, to me, uh, if we are able to uh, provide uh, a sufficient regulation and policies in these three areas, I think uh, you would build 
uh, an ecosystem uh, in Malaysia uh, which is ready uh, for uh, the future and, and the, challenge that, uh, the challenges that technology will present us uh, moving ahead. So by and large, uh, that, that is what the approach is. Um, we think that uh, for now, those should be the focal points. And uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, uh, hopeful that we will succeed. Uh, but then again, you know, we, we do not know what technology uh, developments uh, we will see uh, in future very quickly uh, these days. Uh, but uh, what is important is to build a structure that is sustainable and a structure that is ready and able to provide uh, us uh, uh, with uh, the proper uh, tools, regulations and policies that we need uh, moving ahead. So that's how we look at uh, uh, um, um, regulating uh, technology and, of course, policies that deal uh, with the changes that uh, we have to face in future. Minister, you raise many interesting points. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. More coming up from the studio of the WSIS Plus 20 Forum High Level Event.